have been thinking a lot just recently about how we create something that's different, how something turns up that has never happened before. I think I posted about it before, but I was at a conference last week, a very good one in Nuneaton, uh, what, and uh, I, I really enjoyed while I was there anyway, because I had to leave early. And I heard a brilliant presentation talking, a woman talking about how some of the new innovations in maternity care were going to happen and take place. And it struck me that, oh, that was the sun. One of the measures for how old you are is how frequently things you've done in the past seem to come up as new. And I think we were talking about continuity schemes and all that kind of stuff. And I was sitting there thinking, well... I've heard this before, no disrespect to the speaker, it was it was a great talk and it was inspirational. When I was involved in continuity schemes, I thoroughly enjoyed them and they worked perfectly and all those, well, they worked perfectly to, a, to an extent that the people within the scheme could manage it. And I realised that actually for something new to turn up, for something brand new, never seen before to turn up, there has to be a discontinuity with what's gone before. There has to be something that's that's innovative, that's outside of our frames of reference. Now, how do we do that when all we have really in order to make a change is the past as a reference point? Hey, sorry about the noise. I'm, I'm waiting to get in the tip. So I thought I would just talk while I'm while I'm here. And then I thought about Edward de Bono. You know, Edward de Bono it was a creator of lateral thinking, uh, which at heart is about ways and methods of creating a discontinuity with the past, uh, creating a way of seeing a way forward that doesn't have the usual frames of reference as its um, starting point. And he was asked once to cure the problem of parking in New York. They didn't want people to park for long within the main city areas. And they had tried parking meters and double yellow lines. And they had no way of doing it. So he came back and he said to them, what I want you to do is to make parking in New York free everywhere. And they're going, yeah, all right. Well, that doesn't solve the problem. He says, ah, but there's something I want to add. He said, if you park and you don't leave your lights on, you'll get towed away or charged an inord, you know, a, a massive amount of money. You see, the idea was, what was new to the system was the idea of leaving your lights on. Because suddenly, if people didn't get back to their car within a shorter frame of reference, they wouldn't, they would need towing away anyway, because their battery would have failed. Something new was brought to bear upon the system that led to possibilities that weren't there before and I start started wondering I wonder when it comes to maternity care what we can introduce into the system that's never been there before but suddenly creates possibility suddenly creates possibility now um, I don't know what that might be. I don't know how that might work. But I was at a birth conference on Saturday and I had a thoroughly good time in Manchester. It was brilliant and I was energised. And I, I was thinking, do you know, we could spend all our time creating great birth. We could, we could create midwives and doulas that know how to facilitate good birth. We could inform fathers to the point where they really intuitively have an insight into what's good birth and still have structures that don't work. In fact, we could end up having good birth on the Titanic. So, uh, the challenge to me today is what can I begin to introduce into the system of my thinking around birth that would lead to possibilities rather than the just same old, same old. Thank you very much.